The NFL trade deadline is behind us, but there's still plenty of players out there that are looking for a home and talented players at that. On today's show, we are going to examine the top 10 players that could sign after the NFL trade deadline. We'll go over that coming up in just a moment. Before we do, the bosses said to me, Tyler, there's no way you guys can get 20 subscribers off of today's video. And I said, ha, we're about to prove you wrong. Can we get 20 subs off today's video? Can we stick it to the bosses? to James Yoder and Brett Scott and, and all those guys. Can we show them who's boss? Subscribe now. Let's get 20 subs off today's video for more NFL content. This is the channel for you. Subscribe now for free, and we'll get started with today's show. We begin with the first free agent on our list. That is Nadamakan Sue. Nadamakan Sue, who was uh, most recently with the Philadelphia Eagles, has had a fantastic career, a future first ballot Hall of Famer, a five-time Pro Bowler, a Super Bowl champion. He's been really good everywhere he's been, from the Eagles to the Bucs, the Rams, the Dolphins, uh, the Lions, just to name a few. Now, here's the thing. When it comes to Dom Kinsu, whatever team potentially signs him, they're not going to get the Dom Kinsu that we saw a couple years ago. He's not the elite talent he once was, but he is still a Willie Mammoth of sorts. He is still a force to be reckoned with and couldn't make a difference for somebody. He's not going to be an every-down player, but he's going to be a lot cheaper than what he was at one point. Last year, he played with the Eagles for next to nothing. The numbers on Adonavikin Sue last year, in the eight games he played, he had 10 tackles, one sack. But the year prior to that was very solid. 27 sa- tackles, six sacks, and seven tackles for loss. He is now working, trying to take my job as an analyst for Sky Sports in the U.K., covering the NFL, and uh, he was asked recently about his chances to come back to the NFL, said he's had discussions with the Ravens, and asked where he could play for. He said, where's the right fit? Where's the right opportunity? Where can I go and add value? I don't just want to sit there and watch other guys be successful. Have options, that's the key, and make decisions from there. So, what do you guys think? Will we see the Sue in 2023? If you think we will, type Y for yes. If not, type in for no. Way in that comment section or pin comment today. Will we see Nadaba Kinsu or not? Tell me what you think. Next on the list is Lel Collins, the offensive tackle, who was most recently with the Cincinnati Bengals, but uh, after an injury was ultimately released from Cincinnati. And Collins feels like he's all healthy, that he's in good shape, ready to make a return to the football field. He's had discussions with several different teams, but has not signed with anybody just yet. Was most recently with the Bengals, before that with the Cowboys, and after seven seasons, he's got plenty of experience, 89 career games played with 86 starts, but still might have something left to offer. And prior to the start of the 2022 season, Pro Football Focus rated him still as one of the top tackles in football, 13th best in the league. Then the season happened. His numbers weren't great last year, according to those PFF scores, as he had an overall grade of 57.9, a run block rate of 73.5, pass block rate of 44.2. But you don't have to go very far to find the last time Lowell Collins played at a high level. 2021 with the Dallas Cowboys, his overall grade was awesome. An 82, a run block rate of 89.8, Pass block rate is 76.2. Truth of the matter is this. If Lel Collins is fully healthy, he is too good to remain unemployed as far as I'm concerned. Some team would be silly if you need offensive tackle help not to pick up Lel Collins. Next on our list is Jarvis Landry at the wide receiver position. Jarvis Landry, he's had a very good career. Seven career seasons with at least 750 yards receiving or more. A five-time Pro Bowler but has been hit by the injury bug. Missed a lot of last year with the New Orleans Saints. But what we've seen from Jarvis Landry over the years, he's never been the big, deep threat, but he's always been a very good possession receiver and done a really good job of getting open in the middle of the field, getting open in space. And you look at his numbers here. You're not looking with Jarvis Landry, somebody to be your number one or number two receiver. But if you're a team that needs a spark of some sorts, 
that needs that slot guy potentially to get your offense going, Jarvis Landry is ready to sign somewhere tomorrow and make a difference on somebody's team. Jarvis Landry is, without question, the best wide receiver that remains available on the market right now. Today's show is sponsored by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the place to go for daily fantasy made easy. Here's how Prize Picks works you pick two or more players in any given category, and you get the choice of more or less on the props associated with them. I won big on Prize Picks a couple weeks ago, and you can do the same too. Here's what we're playing on Prize Picks this week play along with me at home if you so choose. I'm going with Dak to have less than 253.5 passing yards. And Josh Allen to have less than 270.5 passing yards. If I put $20 down and both those hit, then we are turning that, folks, into $60. Here's what Price Picks is offering you. You can get a $100 deposit match when you use the promo code CLNS. So head to prizepicks.com slash CLNS to play along with me today and get that $100 deposit match. The link is in the comments and the description of today's video. That's prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Next on the list, we find Melvin Ingram, the edge rusher who has been successful everywhere he's been over the years, from the Dolphins to the Chiefs, the Steelers, and the Chargers, three-time Pro Bowler. And you talk about consistency. This is a guy that's had six career seasons with six sacks or more. And in this circumstance, it's really interesting, right, when you're talking about signing somebody at this point in the year of how much of an impact can they make of learning a new scheme on the fly in the second half of the season. When he joined the Chiefs, that was in the middle of the year and had to learn on the fly. And the Chiefs were very happy with the difference that he made as a rotational pass rusher. And I've said this before, I'll say it again, you can never have too many pass rushers Melvin Ingram could be a good fit for somebody. Last year, he was really good. Six sacks, one forced fumble, seven tackles for loss, 22 tackles. The year before that, two sacks, one forced fumble, 25 tackles, and four tackles for loss. Melvin Ingram still has something to offer for somebody. But he's not the only top edge rusher on the market. Carlos Dunlap also remains available right now, and he's still looking for a home somewhere. Check this out on Carlos Dunlap. The resume is... Very solid. Two-time Pro Bowler, uh, a Super Bowl champion most recently with the Kansas City Chiefs. And you talk about consistency. Every season of his career, he's had at least four sacks. Terrific, right? And even just in recent years, I know that when we talk about these free agents and these older guys that are trying to find a home, you always wonder about fall-off of some sort. How much do they really have left? What we've seen as of late from Carlos Dunlap is that he's still a top-flight player in this league. Four sacks last year as a rotational piece for Kansas City, played in all 17 games. The year prior to that in Seattle, eight and a half sacks, one forced fumble, eight tackles for loss. He was really good there. So Carlos Dunlap still has something to offer. If I'm looking for an edge rusher, I would be thrilled to have either one of these guys. I'm surprised they're still around. So if you had to pick an edge, which guy would you rather have, Melvin Ingram? Or Carlos Dunlap? Type M for Melvin Ingram. Type C for Carlos Dunlap. Which one would you like to have? Let us know in the comment section below. Next on the list, turn our attention to Desmond King. Desmond King, who has uh, been with the Chargers, the Titans, the Texans, the Steelers. Bit of a journeyman of some sorts. Was a first-team All-Pro back in 2018. Most recently was released by the Pittsburgh Steelers back on October 18th. So of all the free agents we're talking about today, he has been a free agent the uh, least longest of anybody here. So he's fresh on the free agent front. Things didn't work out in Pittsburgh, uh, but that doesn't mean he can't work out somewhere else. He's coming off a season where he was really good last year. Two interceptions, 89 tackles, eight pass breakups. The year prior to that, had three interceptions And as you look at some of these rosters around the NFL, I I scour those depth charts and I see guys that aren't as good as Desmond King. And it kind of blows my mind. I'm like, why does this guy have a job but Desmond King doesn't? So, I want to ask you guys, who's a player your favorite team should sign? We've gone through several players. We've got more to get to. But who would you like to see your team pick up in free agency? 
of players that are available right now. Chat me in that comment section. Let us know what you think. Now, the best of the rest, a little rapid fire here. Landon Collins remains available. You're looking for a safety? Landon Collins, not a bad option for a secondary. Eric Fisher at the offensive tackle position, did not play last year, has been recovering from injury, but this is somebody with experience at a high level at left tackle and right tackle, a Super Bowl champion, former number one overall pick. Eric Fisher, not a bad football player. Another head scratcher, why he's still available, Matt Ioannidis, who played with the Panthers and the Washington Commanders. He is still out there, a really good interior defensive lineman. And then there's Bryce Callahan, who was solid last season, had two-plus interceptions uh, last year, and he still remains available. So another good corner option potentially there. Thanks for joining us here on this edition of NFL Daily. Subscribe now for more NFL coverage as we talk about the league each and every day here on the channel, and we'll see you next time.